Om Sang Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. On page 128, name number 601. Om Bhu Swaha. Om Ra Swaha. Om Swa Swaha. Om Bur Ra Swa Swaha. Om Dure Swaha. Om Doi Hai Swaha. Om Doi Trai Hai Swaha. Om Dura Sakai Hai Swaha. Om Narayan Hai Swaha. Om Narasim Hai Swaha. Om Dure Singar Hai Kaloi Hai Hai Swaha. Om Nadim Hai Swaha. Om Narakanya Hai Swaha. Om Narasude Swaha. Om Naga Nai Kaya Gitsa Om Nana Ratna Vichitram Gitsa Om Nana Parana Mandhi Kaya Gitsa Om Drakastaya Gitsa Om Drakulupaya Gitsa Om Vintuka Dushkrita Nasi Gitsa Om Rinkariya Gitsa Om Srinkariya Gitsa Om Hunkariya Gitsa Om Klesha Nazi Yagiswa, Om Nakatma Jai Yagiswa, Om Nakarar Yagiswa, Nabi Nai Yagiswa, Om Nutan Priya Yagiswa, Om Nirajashya Yagiswa, Om Nirajabhai Yagiswa, Om Navala Banya Sundar Yagiswa, Om Niti Gya Yagiswa, Om Niti Da Yagiswa, Om Nithya Iswa, Om Nimna Nabhya Iswa, Om Nagishwarya Iswa, Om Nishtaya Iswa, Om Nityaya Iswa, Om Nirakantaya Iswa, Om Nagayudho Palityantinya Iswa, Om Nidhidaya Iswa, Om Nidhirubhaya Iswa, Om Nirgunaya Iswa, Om Narabhadhinya Kiswa, Om Narabham Surataya Kiswa, Om Narya Kiswa, Om Narabhunda Vibhushanaya Kiswa, Om Niradharaya Kiswa, Om Nirikaraya Kiswa, Om Nutya Kiswa, Om Nirvanasundarya Kiswa, Om Narasrita Apanapathaya Kiswa, Om Nirvairaya Kiswa, Om Nadakamiya Kiswa, Om Paramaya Kiswa, Om Pratikaya Kiswa, Om Pratyaya Kiswa, Om Parvatiya Kiswa, Om Paratatma Chaya Kiswa, Om Parapriyaya Kiswa, Om Paparataya Kiswa, Om Paranya Kiswa, Om Parapavantana Kalinya Kiswa, Om Paraparatraya Kiswa, Om Purvaya Kiswa, Om Pachimaya Kiswa, Om Paranasinya Kiswa, Om Pachunam Patipatniya Kiswa, Om Patipati Parayanya Kiswa, Om Pareshya Kiswa, Om Parakaya Kiswa, Om Paraya Kiswa, Om Paranjoti Svarupinya Kiswa, Om Nishturaya Kiswa, Om Kurar Kritayaya Kiswa, Om Parasitya Kiswa, Om Parakatya Kiswa, Om Pashutna Kiswa, Om Pashuvaya Kiswa, Om Pashuvaya Kiswa, Om Pashuvahinya Kiswa, Om Hidre Kiswa, Om Hatre Kiswa, Om Yatre Kiswa, Om Pashupasha Om Binasinya Kiswa, Om Padminya Kiswa, Om Padmahasaya Kiswa, Om Padmakinjokabhasinya Kiswa, Om Padmapakraya Kiswa, Om Padmakshya Kiswa, Om Padmasaya Kiswa, Om Padmasambhavaya Kiswa, Om Padmasyaya Kiswa, Om Pachanya Kiswa, Om Pardaya Kiswa, Om Purnapika Nivasinya Kiswa, Om Panaraga Pratikashaya Kiswa, 
She who is the energy of the one who is half man, half lion. Remember that that uh, 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 Hiram Yakushipu won the boom that he couldn't be he, you couldn't be slain by man nor beast. So Vishnu became half man and half beast, and he said, "Hey, I'm neither man nor am I a beast." <laughs> She who resides in the heart of the one who is half man, half lion. That's, that's our girl. She who is a serpent of energy. And wherever you see snakes, you always think of Shakti. These are different forms of Kundalini. All these snakes, and there are usually Ashtanagivyo. There are eight forms of the snakes. And uh, there is uh, Taksha who is the king of snakes, uh, and also there is Amanth, and there is uh, Sheshna. Uh, these are three of the most famous of the age. Now, uh, where all, wherever you see the snakes, you understand that Kundalini is rising. Remember, the same as consciousness inside and consciousness outside, Mahashakti, is outside the great unlimited expanse of energy and inside she's called kundalini when we say that kundalini is sleeping it's just poetry if the energy within were sleeping it could only sleep in a corpse all living beings possess kinetic energy only a corpse has sleeping energy. What we really mean when we say Kundalini is sleeping is that my consciousness, my awareness is sleeping. I'm sleeping. I'm not watching her. I am not aware of her. So the idea of waking up the Kundalini really means waking myself so that I can pay attention to the form of energy that is usually symbolized or often symbolized by the snake, the rising snake. She who is the daughter of the serpent of energy. She who is the excellent being of a serpent of energy. She who is the leader of the serpents of energy. She whose body has the image of various jewels. She was adorned with various ornaments. She was situated in the reliever of difficulties, or situated as the reliever of difficulties, or she who, hmm, she resides, situated, reposes, in Durga, <laughs> in the reliever of difficulties. Remember also, Durgam means difficulties, and Durgam means confusions, and Durga takes away the Durga. And that's how the etymology of her name. So she's Durga Stai, she is situated in the form of Durga. No, that's the next one. Durga Rupaya, she who is the form of Durga the reliever of difficulties. She who destroys the pain of evil deeds. Dushkrita. Dushkrita duk nasini. She nasheth, she makes destruction or destroys or uh, terminates the duk, the pain of dushkrit. The kri means do. Dushkrit means do bad. She does, she destroys the pain of those who do bad. She, who is the letter Hrim? Remember, Halkara the day Hashad. The H is the gross body which is perceived through the senses. Ra Kara Shukshma Dei Hakad. The R is your subtle body, what you can conceive in your mind. E Kara, Kara Namasto, E, the letter E, or the I with the hat on top. The letter E is the causal body which is perceived through meditation or intuition or... And Anuswar is perfection and beyond. She is the letter Hrim. 
And of course, in Sanskrit, it's one letter. Uh, it's only when we try to break it into English and explain it in English, it becomes four letters. But in Sanskrit, it's she's the letter Hrim. And next, she is the letter Shrim. Shakara Shanti Prakash. Rakara Shukshma Deha Ka Ikara Karamana So Srim Bijam Itni Sreshta Sampat. She is Shah, she is peace. Shanti. Ra in your mind, E in your heart, Anuswar, she, she is the perfection of peace in your mind, in your heart. And that is the Sreshta Thampot, the ultimate love. She was letter whom? Astra, Astra Beach. She remember in, in chapter uh, 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 six uh, when Dumral Ocean came to the goddess and said, Goddess, you come down from that altar there, or I'll pull you by the hair. You come here and sit with the great ego, with the with uh, the the self conceit, because he is so conceited. You should sit with him. And the goddess said, Whom? and reduced him to ashes. And look at all those sinful eyes we have in our Havankun, all those ashes that have been reduced. She is the letter whom? She who destroys all blemishes. I wish I knew her when I was in high school. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, she also applies to a, 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 us grown-ups, too, when we don't have any more pimples or blemishes. Uh, and she takes away all those defects. She who gives birth to the soul of the serpent of energy. She who is as knowledgeable as a serpent of energy. She who is young. She who is new love, new thorn priya. Uh, you know how that feels for a while. While well, it's still new love. <laughs> she who is produced from the waters. Remember, we we churn the milk ocean and Sarva Sandhya Maha Lakshmi, Triguna Parameshwari, Lakshmi popped out. She who shines from the waters. She who has a young, charming beauty. She who knows discipline. This niti. This niti is discipline, but it's also, uh, it's the process. Niti is the, is the process. It's the, it's the, the, how the function, the crumb, the card you come. The, the, uh, the order of events is also a discipline. So when you perform puja, for example, there is a krum, the, the, a padhoti. If we make puja into an eye, a, outline, we say padhoti. This is the name or the title of our outline, this padhoti. Within the padhoti are a series of vidis. These are the, the, the capital letters. And now it, from the uh, uh, from the capital letters, we come into cr of the crumb, the order of events under each, there would be the cardinal num numerals. Uh, so then, uh, and then in each crumb, you have a mantra and a kriya, and uh, you, you have so many other elements, the order, the organization, the discipline, the order, organization of the discipline. Iti, niti. She who knows discipline, she who gives discipline, she who is discipline. She whose belly button is deep. Somebody likes deep belly button. She who is the supreme ruler of the serpents of energy. She who is disciplined. She who is eternal. She who is indifferent to various perceptions. 
She who is the sacred stripe on a serpent of energy. You know, some snake of snakes, they have a stripe. I used to have a long one on, on, on my forehead. And uh, sometimes I would go out, especially when I came to the Western countries, and people would say, gee, I really like your stripe. <laughs> I said, yes, it makes me run faster. <laughs> She who gives the system. She who is the form of the system. Now here this nidhi is very similar to the nidhi. But the nidhi, uh, it, these are the, the, the forms of the systems by which we, or which we employ in any, in any objective that we pursue. There's a system to get there. If you want to become a, a, a doctor, a lawyer, or an Indian chief, there is a nidhi, a system, we could call it a curriculum or a syllabus, and then you just follow the syllabus and you get to your objective. She who is without qualities, she who rides upon a man, not a vahini. So the human or humanity. It could be also humanity. So humanity is the vehicle, the conveyance of the gods. She who is pleased with human flesh. Not a month She is rati, delighted with the mansa, the meat of humans. She who is a woman. She who holds a human head. And our prayer is that she takes mine <laughs> quickly because take away all of my ego, take away all of my attachments, take away all of my individuality and make me one with you. And that's what it means that she holds the human. She has all the negativities that I possess with her. So I no longer possess them. She who takes away. She who is without a cause. She who is worshipped. How can she have a cause when she is the cause of all the causes? She who is worshipped, she who is the beauty beyond manifestation. She who is delighted by the drink of human blood. And now we're talking about Rakhabija, the seed of desires. So all of this blood is every member, every desire that touched the ground became a new desire, gave birth to a new desire. That was the form of Rakhabija. So she, remember in the uh, seventh chapter, she just opened her mouth and, and she drank. In the eighth chapter, she opened her mouth and she drank the blood or the, the seeds of desire until he ran out of desires. She who is without hostility. She who moves with the serpents of energy. She who is the supreme manifestation. She who is the measurement. She who is primary knowledge. She who is the daughter of the mountain. She who gives birth. And again, uh, Parvat Atma Jai, she who gives birth to the soul of the mountain. And she who is who is loved, she who's, who's loved changes the moon, or she who loves to change the moon, or she loves the changes of the moon, because the moon continually changes. She who manifests the changes of the moon. Let's look at these changes of the moon. Because remember, the moon is the, the emblem of devotion. And it's growing and growing and growing. It's waxing throughout the, 
the shukla paksh. And the, the devotion grows as the tides grow. And as she attracts, with greater attraction, she pools on the waters, the, 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 the moon changes. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Until the light shines only within. And she enjoys and manifests the changes of the moon. She who protects the pure changes of the moon. She who is higher than the highest. She who is in the east. She who is in the west. She who destroys sin. She who is the husband and wife of all animals. Uh, so either she manifests as your husband or as your wife. Or as both. She who is always devoted to her husband. She who is the supreme seer. She who moves beyond. She who is an outsider. She who is the intrinsic nature of the highest light. She who is hard. And it's, uh, it can be hard in the terms of shokta, or, uh, you know, ow. Or it could be hard in terms of nishtur. Uh, she's a, a strong disciplinarian. She is uh, firm. She is uh, tenacious. She is relentless. Uh, she is uh, hard. <laughs> she who has fixed her heart. She, she's not fickle. She's fixed to her heart. And she knows what she wants and she, she dedicated herself to her love. She who has the highest attainment. She who is the highest refuge. She who slays animalism. Not the animals. But the animalism, the animalistic tendencies that we tend to cultivate when we respond only from our lower chakras. She who has the form of an animal. She who slays animalism. She who rides on an animal. She who is the ancestor. She who is the mother. She who is the yantra or tool. And remember, your yantra is the tool. It's a tool by which you can focus your attention. She demands when we use the yantra that we, we it's a road map. It shows how we guided our awareness into the center of being. It's a tool. She who destroys the bonds of animalism, she was like a lotus. Remember the lotus of peace. She who has the lotus in her hand, she who dwells in a lotus bud. She who has a lotus mouth. She who has lotus eyes. She who resides in a lotus. She who exists in a lotus. She who is of a lotus. She who is the fifth. And I often take the fifth. <laughs> Especially when some of my close friends would like to buy me a fifth. She is the fifth. And she's all the fives. She who is full, complete, and perfect. She who sits in the perfect pilgrimage place. She who illuminates the movement of the Lotus One. She who resides among the five. Remember all the fives. Five senses, the five uh, uh, organs of action, the five elements of existence, the five. There are lots of fives. She who is the beloved of the fire. She who is the intrinsic nature of the supreme divinity. She who dwells with the supreme divinity. She who is intoxicated with supreme bliss. She resides in the highest center of energy. She who is the greatest seer of all. She who is the supreme manifestation. She who is the earth. She who holds a drinking vessel full of milk. 
She who is the supreme blessing. She who is outside. She who is knowledge. She who is the giver of supreme bliss. She who is worthy of worship. She who is the spirit of all beings born. She who gives nourishment. She whose sharp spear is famous. She pays attention and hits the mark every time. She who takes away life force. She who is the form of the life force. She who is the giver of the life force. She who is the giver of love. She who shines like the serpent of energy. She who wears a nose ornament. She who wears a flowing garland on her neck. She who wears serpents of energy on, upon her body. She who resides in every part of fruit. She who is the partner of excellent strength. She who is strength. She who is the giver of strength. She who has a very small form. She who ends procrastination. My lady. She who plays at the holy festival. Remember, they throw the colors at everybody in celebration of the, the demise of Holy God. She who is the mother of existence. She who is the wife of existence. She who takes away the fear of manifested existence. She who is existence. She who is the supreme lord of existence. She who strives to please existence. She who is the seer of existence. She who is the leader of existence. She who is the mother of existence. She who is the supreme wealth. She who is the form of wealth. She who is the beloved of existence. She who is the bliss of existence. She who is the manifestation of existence. She who annihilates existence. She who manifests. She who is the supreme wealth of existence. She who destroys the burdens of existence. She who creates the elements. She who is the goddess of the elements. She who resides in the elements. She who is the form of the elements. She who is the mother of the elements. She who slays disembodied spirits. Oh, no. Let's see if there are any questions about this next 150 names. Yes, please. Uh, Swamiji, in uh, name number 635, she who is indifferent to various perceptions. Yes. Now, this indifference, is it a quality of the mind that coexists with the other quality that of participating actively and with passion uh, in our life? Or is it the quality of the soul? Both. Both. That's not fair. Is it the quality of the mind or the quality of the soul? Indifference means that we have no personal bias or prejudice. It means we are non judgment We are perceiving what is and conceiving truth. True facts. So it's not fair to say, is it the quality of the soul or the quality the mind. It is the quality of both. Indifference means that I'm not applying my personal prejudices to my perception. I'm just seeing what is. The reality. There's a true perception. And I'm thinking of true knowledge, not just my opinion. Not whether I like it or dislike it. Not the way I want it to be, but the way it is. And that would be indifference. Now, you can be passionately indifferent. You can be indifferent with passion. You, you love God. And you perceive God's creation without any prejudice, without any bias. For example, study of true knowledge, the study of Sanskrit. It's not because I like it or because I don't like it. And I don't dislike this name or, dis or like this name. Uh, but I'm passionately trying to study it. 
I'm passionately trying to understand without any imposition of subjectivity. That would be a clearer definition of indifference. Are there other questions? Please. Swami Ji, um, this um, refers to that she is the East and the West. Yes. Can you um, explain to me, first of all, is there at some point where she's also North and yes, South? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and what's the differences in, in these directions? Because I know our altar is supposed to face a, a certain east. direction. And no, your sadhu, the sadhu will face east. And the, the deity will face west. The sadhu will face north. And the deity will face south. But the reason we face the east is the sun rises in the east and it brings along with it the Adhara Shakti. This is the primary energy. So now here, if we make our primary worship in the morning, then we want to face the east so that we are facing that rising energy that comes to us and we get filled with that energy. More so than if we turn our back on. Now, if we are primary worship is any time, day or night, we'll want to make our altar so that the worshiper faces the north. Because there's the, uh, the polar energy is uh, available at any time. So, the, when she is in the east, it's because she is, or comes with the rising sun, the illumination of wisdom. When she's in the West, it's because she reflects the setting sun, uh, which means the, the, the culmination of activity, the termination of the day's activities, is in the West when the sun sets. So here she's in the East, and here she's in the West. Are there other questions? Uh, Swamiji, question from Marsha from Los Angeles. Namaste, Marsha Ma. Um, Masha is wondering, Swamiji, can you explain what is meant by name number 592, which says, Om Dhu Sarai Swaha, she who is gray. Yes, she's obscure. She's, she's obscure. She, you can't perceive her e easily. You can't define her easily. She is the one who emits of shades of gray. She's not black and she's not white. She's got it all mixed within her. There's no way that we can define her, Marsha, no matter how we try. And that's what they're representing here. Swamiji, um, when Ma is spoken of as the measurement, does it pertain to her controlling the time of death or endings in general? As in name 652, where we say, Om Pramitai Swaha, she who is the measurement. Uh, do you know, uh, Ma, as a measurement, all begin, means also the beginning and the end, but also it means the form of the container. Every container is a measurement. The measurement, I mean, it has perceivable existence. You can see where the limits are. For example, this is the measurement of Swami. I'm glad you didn't do it in the middle. I'm trying to measure him in the middle. But you see, you can measure where does a Swami end? Because he's got a boundary. He's got a limitation. And that great limitation is the definition of the form. So here, the measurement, or the limitation, or the, the uh, container, or the boundary, are all used interchangeably to say that this is a distinguishable individual form. And now, she is the measurement. Means that she gives individuality to all forms of existence. Swamiji, and number 699, where it says, She who resides in the highest center of energy, Para Chakra Niva Shinye Swaha, Masha is asking, is that the crown chakra? Oh, that is the crown chakra for those who wear a crown. <laughs> However, we're talking about Maha Shakti. We're 
talking about the great infinite energy, the highest center of infinite energy. Go ahead. Now, Marsha, please, show me the limit, the boundary. Where the location, where is the location of the highest center of infinite energy? Go ahead. That's the meditation. Go there. Go to that place, Marsha, and please come back and bless me. Question from Kumari from Valley Hill. Namaste Kumari Ma. Pranam Swamiji, the mother goddess is said to be a Naga as well as mother of the Nagas and daughter of the Nagas. In addition to meaning snake, Naga is also referred to somewhat mysterious ancient people in India. Can Swamiji tell us something about the Naga people and if they had mother worship? Yes, they did. And not only about the Naga peace, uh, people, but there's the Naga sannyasis because it's also a, uh, one of the 12 tribes of sannyasis uh, by, uh, uh, defined by Shankaracharya. Now, these people are mother worshippers and they are filled with energy. And they live in a very highly forested area, in a jungly uh, area. They're mostly considered to be Adivasi uh, or tribal type people. So their civilization is a little bit removed uh, from them. Or they are a little bit removed from civilization. So uh, they, they live with snakes. They live with energy. They are also naked, uh, and that's another expression of Naga. Uh, so uh, these, uh, there are many aspects. Uh, you know, Naga land is um, you know, to the very, very east of uh, India, uh, along that area of Upper Assam, above Bangladesh. Uh, it, you know, so it's uh, east of East Pakistan. That whole area of Nagaland, Mizoram, uh, Tripura, uh, th those are the states. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, part of Assam is also uh, considered to be part of that whole Adivasi belt. Samaji, question from Janitri. Namaste, Janitri. Namaste, Samaji. Can you please explain number 750 more? She who slays disembodied spirits. What are they? Why do they exist? Oh, Bhut, Preta, Bisatsasya, Dharnava, Rakshasastake. And these Bhuts, they, they're disembodied spirits. And they are spirits that have been set free from the body, but they are still attached uh, to the mind. Uh, so it, it's very possible that your spirit leaves a body or a spirit leaves a body but doesn't achieve uh, freedom. It doesn't achieve liberation. Uh, we call them ghosts and goblins. And uh, 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 Shiva always hangs out with boots and prints, ghosts and goblins. Uh, he, he likes those kind of guys because they, they, they're, uh, uh, they're terrifying to the uninitiated and they, they protect him from disturbance so he can surround himself with, with people that are beings that are terrifying but, and yet they really have no power. Uh, there are many legends that they do have power and we make a propitiation to all the, to the disembodied spirit, spirits in the worship ceremony. Uh, we, we offer them, uh, we offer them uh, uh, flower petals. Uh, you can offer, also offer them uh, black sesame seeds and sometimes uh, white grains of, grains of white rice. Uh, and many times you throw it over your shoulder, especially if other people clean up the puja after you. <laughs> you, you throw them all around. Otherwise, when you have to clean up the puja yourself, you take the flower petals and put them on the altar. <laughs> uh, but we make an offering to these disembodied spirits uh, and say, be propitious to us. We are children, uh, uh, we are the family of Lord Shiva. We are the children uh, of Shiva. Uh, you have
have no reason to put any fear into us. We are asking that you be set free. Yes, please. Swamiji, name number 725. Pralambagnye Swaha. Is she who ends procrastination? Yes. Is there any merit to doing japa to just that name, if that's a quality that we have? Yes, there is. However, you will get more benefit, I believe, than by doing the entire thousand names, just reading the book from cover to cover, than you will by doing the japa of any one particular name. So, in of course, in all scriptures, it says if you can stay with one name, you don't have any need for a whole text. But the problem is you can't stay with one name. So be honest with yourself and instead of trying to bite off little chunks of the sadhana from here and there and putting it together and making uh, your own patchwork quilt of sadhana, take one text of sadhana. Now, it says in the Chandi that the entire 700 mantras is as one mantra. So you get more benefit doing the entire Chandi pot than you do uh, any one mantra. But then it says at the end, na kavacham na orgulas dotum kilakam na dhashikam na sutam nyasam nyapicha na dhyanam na chavarchan. Kunjika pata matrina. It's not this and it's not that. It's like, just do this kunjika stotram. And then it says within the kunjika stotram, just do the namarna mantra. <laughs> so now, if you do the namarna mantra and the kunjika stotram and the whole chandi pot, and then read the thousand names of Anapurna, I think you're well covered. You'll be better protected, but pray to her when she comes to you. Says, what, what do you want? When she comes to you and says, What do you want? You say, Please end my procrastination. Would you please put a burr in my asana so that I don't sit here being procrastinating? I want to get up and go to work and really engage in this stuff. So stop allowing my procrastination, please, and make that your prayer. Because she's going to come to us frequently throughout our pujas, throughout our worship, throughout our homa, throughout our recitation of the chandi or whichever pot you choose, and then she's going to say, okay, you're doing this sadhana, why? What do you want from me? And that could be a very good thing to ask her for, if that's what's, if it's on your list. And if not, put it there. <laughs> Swamiji, question from Nanda from San Jose. Namaste, Nanda Ma. Pranam Swamiji, if I chant a text and it becomes a routine for me, almost a habit, without any interest or longing on my part, does it still continue to be classified as a sadhana? Yes, it does. But the better sadhana would be to switch to another text. And then it will be new and fresh and alive and inspiring and new things to figure out. And then come back to the other text and it'll look, oh, you'll see it from different eyes. It's still sadhana. The day that it is the most difficult to chant, the day that it is the most difficult to pay attention to, the day that it is the most difficult to get to the end of, is the day that you get the greatest benefit. Because when you complete your sankalpa, you can say to yourself, Self, I can do this. Yes, we can. We can do this. We can get to the end of this. And now I have no excuse to ever break my ass on and not get to the end of it. 
Because I know I can do it. Even when my mind doesn't pay attention. Even when my body doesn't feel like it. Even when my breath is bad. Then I can still get to the end. I can still complete the sun cult. Just please help me. Swamiji, there are uh, many different Sahasranams for yes. different people. When would we do Annapurna's? Under what kind of when we go to Annapurna's temple. <laughs> when we offer food. When we do Annapurna's puja. When we, at any time that's appropriate. There are many Sahasranams. Right. So, so Every deity. Right, so when, how, what makes you choose one over another? You don't. You do them all. <laughs> huh? And now we're going to do 10,000 sasranas. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can just keep going. Uh, there's a, there's a, whatever is appropriate for the worship that you are per performing. Uh, for example, we're going to Benares. And in Benares, we'll sit in Vishwanath's temple, in Shiva's temple, and we'll read the Shiva Sasrana. And then we'll go across the street to Annapurna's temple, we'll read the Annapurna Sasra. We're going to Ram's temple, we're going to read the, uh, we'll read the, the worship for Ram, the worship for Hanuman, the worship for, oh, for the Vishnu Sasra. So we, in this way, we are empowered with a tool chest that won't quit. And everywhere we go, everyone will say, wow, they are in harmony with the worship of this temple. And the truth is, we just love God. I don't care if it's Ram's thousand names or Annapurna's thousand names. It's all one God. So I want to read them all as much as I can in as many circumstances as possible. Because that gives us the, the capacity to empower those people with our inspiration. And that's our seva. And when we do our seva properly, we feel good. So that's our delight. And when we do, when we make an offering, we make a contribution, and it's valid, and it's accepted, and it's appreciated, don't you feel good about it? That is the joy. And so we, we accomplish so many functions with one small sattva, with one small offering. We harmonize our behavior with the behavior of the people who are inviting us. We, we show respect to them by appreciating their form of worship and by participating in it and inviting them to participate with us in their form of worship. We create bridges of understanding and harmony and we, we, we create a love affair. And then you'll find when you're sitting in India in the temples, there is a love affair. And then people will respect you and love you and welcome you and go out of their way to see how they can make it more harmonious. And that's the objective. Then we feel good. Then they feel good. And everybody feels good. And We've got win-win negotiations going on. And that's the, the goal. We come into harmony with God. We come into harmony with our satsang. We come into harmony with their satsang. We bring their satsang into our satsang. And pretty soon we're all God's children having a blast. And that's why we're learning different forms of worship for different circumstances, so that we are empowered to go anywhere and do anything and feel like we're, we belong. We're at home. We're with our family. Wonder, what a wonderful way of life. It's a wonderful perception because pretty soon we say, hey, it's not about this God or that God. It's not about this name of God or that name of, or that this goddess or that goddess or this religion or that religion or this color or that color. It's about us, the kids of mom, coming home to mom, sharing together. And then we leave the religion behind. We become 
spiritual. The religion is a form that helps us cultivate our spirituality. But spirituality is the goal, not religion. We'll go way beyond religion. That's just the form, the context, the language that we're agreeing to employ for this set of circumstances. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaste. Namaste.